Hello, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And today's episode is for July 31st, 2023, episode 89, and it is a listener question episode. Yay! <laughs> And Chelsea has quilts done. (laughs) You guys, this is a moment. I have quilts done. And actually, I um, am almost done with my last quilt. I got all the blocks done last night. I shared kind of a peek on Instagram. It's called Sunshine Girl. And I actually think it's my favorite now. Really? It's so cute. I just have to add some sashing and borders. But by the time this airs, It'll be done. Right. Yeah. I just had to go to bed. I was so tired. (laughs) Rest is good. Yeah. And I also feel like some, we've had a question before, like, when do you know when to stop? And it was getting to that point where I was really tired and you kind of get to the point where you're like, eh, I don't care. And things aren't getting done perfectly. And I'm like, this is a good time to stop and rest and come back to it tomorrow and do it you know, perfectly again or yeah. whatever. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. So tell us about your quilts. Okay. You guys, I'm not kidding. I did a post on Instagram recently saying sewing with strawberry lemonade fabrics actually make me happy. And it's true. I love it so much. So on the wall, we're going to start with botanical remix and you might know I had designed a quilt in happy days called botanical garden And I always wanted to do something more with that and kind of have a sister quilt to it. So that's what Botanical Remix (laughs) is. And this quilt features four different star flower blocks. So there's like probably six of each of those different four star star flower blocks. It is fat eighth friendly with yardage because these leaves you're going to need extra green prints for that as well. And it is a blast to make. Billy and I already did a video on this where we went into more depth on it. And then guys, borders. Who am I? Yeah. I did two print borders that were not just plain low volume, tone on tone. Mom, are you impressed? Yeah, I love it. (laughs) I love it. So this is Botanical Remix, and it is also a boxed kit with Moda. So if you are interested in a boxed kit, it is important to get pre-orders for those So, because Moda kind of sees what orders come in, and then they only order like that amount. Right. Yeah. So I think you can pre-order it on Fat Quarter Shop right now. Yeah. We'll, we'll put a link in the description. Actually, I saw it on there. So we will put a link to that. Yeah, because I checked the Moto website the other day for my Juniper Berries quilt kits, mm-hmm. and they're all sold out. Right. You can't find them. So Botanical Remix is going to be in a cute box with Moda. It's It's going to be awesome. So anyways, Botanical Remix on the wall. And then... We have Hearts at Home 2, which you guys are familiar with, on the table. And when we got the fabrics for the, like, the JPEGs to start designing, I just knew I wanted to redo it in strawberry lemonade. So mom actually (laughs) made this one for me, honey bun friendly. So if you have honey buns, this is perfect for it. And oh, wait, one more thing. Marion Bott did the quilting on Botanical Remix. And Val did the quilt, did custom quilting on the hearts at home. And then mom surprised me. (laughs) You guys, I had no idea she did this. We'll post a picture. Mom goes ahead and not only makes the entire hearts at home to quilt, but she makes a nine block wall hanging (laughs) and it is adorable. And she's over here. And well, like, I was. She's so cute, you guys. The story is, I was trying to surprise her, and so I actually made them. And I told her that I had finished the big quilt and that I was taking it to Val. And what I didn't tell her was that I had also taken the wall hanging because once I finished the big one, I just thought, oh, I can make nine more blocks, you know. So, Who and there is that? enough fabric uh, because. 
the pattern calls for two honey buns and you have enough left over to make a wall hanging. Yes. So I just went ahead and made it and I was hoping to surprise her and just kind of have it on the day of this podcast. But then she said, oh, I've got to make this wall hanging. And and I was afraid she was going to drop everything and start sewing the wall hanging. And so I had to tell her that I made it so that Look she wouldn't me, do it. I'm such an investigator. Thank you, Mom. That was awesome. I was surprised, though. I really, really was surprised. And Mom bound. She's basically binding all my quilts. Yeah. <laughs> I said that on Instagram, too. So botanical remix on the wall, boxed kit, fat eighth friendly, hearts at home, too, on the table, honey bun friendly, and just super cute. And the hearts, you guys, are the orange gingham. Right. Ah! So exciting. So cute. Oh, and then one last thing. On the wall, if you can see, I'll move in just a second, is my row quilt summer slide. On the ladder. On the ladder. (laughs) On the ladder, (laughs) guys. It's behind her. I'm losing my mind. I know. I positioned it so the strawberries would show right there because I think they're so cute. So cute. And Val did custom on that, and it's like amazing. Yeah. So more on the summer slice coming soon. But mom is going to finish binding that one. Yeah. The watermelon doesn't show right there, but it's super cute. Oh, my gosh, you guys. When I show the watermelon. Yeah, I can't wait to pull it off the ladder. Super cute. Yeah. Yeah. So summer slices on the wall, but more coming on that soon. So those are the quilts. I feel like I took a really long time doing that, you guys. I just like talking about that. Yeah, I know. I actually have something I want to talk about, too. We have on the table, if you're watching... Two adorable pin cushions with thread catchers. They were both made by Terry at Curry Bungalow, and we've shared her pin cushions with thread catchers below before. And she does so such incredible work, and just her craftsmanship is wonderful. So you can go to her Etsy shop, and you can purchase one that she has made. But she also sells the patterns, and just really, really love her designs and how she puts everything together. And I sent her fabrics for two and I am going to keep the Dresden one, but the other one with the little flower is for Chelsea. So (laughs) yes, surprise, surprise. I got you anyway. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, you can take that home with you today. Stop it. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And I like saw these <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and mom's like, I know, aren't they cute? <laughs> what? Yeah. So one's for you. That Thank one. <laughs> you. You guys, I don't know how to feel today. Yeah. This is a very exciting I got, day. I got you a surprise. You got me. <laughs> yes. So, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So cute. Any, any other things coming up soon or oh why don't you mention oh, this saturday so long. i am or mentioning no, no, it was actually the past saturday uh, the yeah first so i'll we'll talk out. about it kind of in the past tense mm-hmm. so this this past saturday the very first introduction video for the regal pine so along went live july 29th is when it aired it we're filming this early but july 29th was that first video And it's only an intro video where I talk about the Regal Pine Sew Along in our Favorite Things fabric. Mom told me she's sewing along. Is this? Okay. Yeah. So she is sewing along with us. And it's going to be videos every Saturday, right, Billy? Mm -hmm. Not every other. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I feel like Favorite Things fabrics are finally all in store. And I will have in the video, you'll have noticed if you're just watching now, go to that video. We could link it and it'll have the requirements if you just want to get your own fabrics. And yeah, so we're really excited about it. And we're actually going to be filming videos for it today to kind of get ahead. And I am, I had people ask like, well, what are the videos going to be? You will need the pattern, but I'm going to be going over the blocks that are in the quilt and showing you kind of step outs, how to put those together and yeah, there will also be an accountability PDF checklist that you can print off, kind of like mom's happy-go-lucky. Right. That form, you can like color in all the things and it's going to be good. And that'll be through August, I feel like. Probably like four or five videos 
and we'll just keep ourselves accountable. And I've been working on mine. I actually got, I couldn't stop last night when I was doing the step outs and I got some extra stuff done. Oh, so good. yeah, I did. I was really excited. And so that first video, you make the chain blocks. Yep. The first video you make the chain blocks and that's this coming Saturday. Okay. So the previous Saturday, a couple days ago was the intro video. Okay. And then, but yeah, and then chain blocks is the second video. Second so yeah, video, yeah, second video. Will be the chain. Yeah, okay. Yeah, second video okay. is the chain blocks. Just so I can keep myself yes. in line. Chain blocks first. Mom. Okay, I might need a pattern. I can't remember if I. Oh, I'll bring you one. Okay, <laughs> chain blocks. Yeah, it's and awesome. it's in favorite things fabric. In right? favorite things fabric, I designed regal pines in, in bountiful blooms, right. but we're doing favorite things because it's so cute. It's so cute, All and Christmas them. is coming up, and then you guys, you're gonna have a Christmas quilt. Ready. Ready to go. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, I noticed there was a lot of questions of what yeah. fabric I think it was because you designed it in Bountiful Blooms, but are doing the yeah. so long in that. So, but if, in case anyone doesn't know yet, and it, it is in fact, actually, things. we will pop up a picture of the new version so you can see it in Favorite Things on this podcast. Okay. Just so you can see it. Yeah. So that is happening. Woo. Yeah, awesome. And it's great because I'm done with all of my strawberry lemonade quilts. So yeah. it's just something new to sew. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll take my little portion at this point now. And as you can see, uh, due to a lot of viewer <laughs> and this, well, it would have to be viewer feedback. Right. There is a quilt behind me today in my little corner over here. <laughs> my mom put up a quilt. So it does. I, I, we think it looks a lot better as well. So <laughs> thanks for everyone that that let us know about that. And I also need to make a quick statement. I want to say thank you to a lot of people that said congratulations for my hole in one that I discussed <laughs> last on last episode. But I, and I, I, I edit these videos I watch and in my head, the first thing I thought I had said was if, you know, if any of the listeners or viewers golf, I was saying, I'm sure there are some people some women that watch this podcast golf and I sort of did, but I said it really quick. And then I said, or your husbands or boyfriend or, or boy, well, it could be boyfriends or sons, grandsons. I went into all these like different yeah. male people. <laughs> okay. I was saying, but I, I really did. My intention was at first, if <laughs> any of you golf, maybe you'll appreciate this. So anyway, I, it came off like I said, women didn't golf. I think at least the people, a oh, few people took it that I way. Think that? Well, huh. it, okay. that's what I'm saying. But yeah. a few people took it that way and said, you know, women do golf too, and I'm very well aware of that. And I didn't intend to come off in that manner. <laughs> I just, I thought I that was the first thing I said, and then I was like, or if you don't golf, maybe someone else got golfs, or your daughters or granddaughters. So just want to say sorry if I I didn't mean to offend anyone in that in that manner i definitely know that plenty of women golf and i support it and i think it's awesome so just wanted to just clarify that real quick i i i did it didn't come off as clear as i intended it to come off so i want to start out with that but thank you again for everyone that did say congrats and i still haven't even golfed since then i'm like still soaking it in oh <laughs> wait can i say yeah. something really quick though because yeah. you're talking about last week's video uh -huh. i want to say thank you to all the positive feedback we had about the strawberry lemonade collection oh, yeah. we yes. just really appreciate yes. it yes, thank and want you. everyone to know that all of your words were so kind and we're so appreciative because we are so excited about this collection so thank you guys yeah. And also I got a lot of emails. To, I probably, I don't know if I've forwarded them all to you yet because I keep getting them congratulating <laughs> you on the, on the golf. So oh, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so today for listener quilts, I, I don't have a, a, a photo to share, but I do have um, an email that was sent to my mom that we wanted to include in this section not so much as far as a question because we thought it was really good advice or a good idea. Very informative. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead and read that right now. It says, hi, Sherry. I've been listening to your podcast as I travel. I started listening about six months ago. There have been several shows that I really love. For example, Billy's Quiz, Goal Setting, and Discussion About Your Goal Achievements. She said, I keep a three ring binder in my sewing room that contains information about the quilts and other projects I've made. Each quilt gets a plastic sleeve to contain the information 
the pattern name, a receipt from my long arm quilter, and a photo of me with the quilt. If the quilt is a donation, I write the name of the organi organization and of course the date. If it is entered into an auction, I record the sale value to help me with setting the price for future quilts. In my mind, the binder is for me to look back and enjoy my work. Also, I want my children and grandchildren to have a tangible memory of my efforts and activities when I pass away. Perhaps you will consider sharing this information with others as part of your fifth Monday show. And she said, keep up the good work and great conversations with your kids. I think that is what appeals to me the most about your podcast. Um, I'm the mother of three sons who are now all fathers, fathers themselves. So take, take care. That's from Risa from Kingwood, Texas. So thank you yeah. for writing in. And real quick, I think that's a great way to document everything that you do. I mean, obviously you're going to store some or, you know, give some to charity, but if you take a picture and have like its own sleeve for everything with all that type of information, that that's great record keeping yeah. of all the work you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's really, when I got that email, I just thought, oh, we have to share this. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say that's genius. And exactly what you said, such a good way to keep a history right. of your quilts. Right. That's great. That's awesome. I mean, awesome. just one after another, a new, yeah. new yeah, sheet, yeah. keep the pattern, a picture, yeah. the dates. You'll know like exactly which quilt came after which one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I thought that was pretty neat. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, do you guys have anything like that or not? Well, or, for me, do you want to start? My blog is that. Yeah. Oh, true. I mean, that, mm -hmm. it's very it's true. It's all online, but that's what it is. So. But I mean, and pretty it's much. In chronological don't. order. So. But even the quilts, though, that you donate, um, I know some of them you probably you know, put probably up, but maybe not kept, everyone. I probably should have kept a list of everything I donated. Mm -hmm. I feel like this yeah. is the difference, though. The, so there's tangible and digital yeah, right yeah and so yours is strictly digital right whereas hers is a physical right history yeah of her quilt kind of like a scrapbook like yeah, very right. it yeah just two different types of things yeah 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 i thought it was neat okay well with that we it, this is a listener question episode and i will be reading the the questions today and we also have some reviews to share but before we get into the questions, my mom wanted me to go through and share, well, let's start with this. A lot of questions that we get re repeated over and over, which is fine because mm -hmm. people have questions about it and maybe they haven't been there, haven't been listening to this podcast from the beginning. Um, but there are a lot of questions that come in every time about fabric designing and pattern designing, how to get into it, maybe more information about how you guys started. And so I'm going to put it up on the screen, but I'll also read it out loud and, I'll, and we'll keep it in the show notes. So I went back and, and marked some different episodes where that has been discussed. And not oh. to say that we won't discuss it in the future, but we're not going to focus on, on those questions today. But we just wanted to let you guys know where you could look to, to go back and maybe listen to or find some of those questions answers to those questions. So the first one I, I wanted to mention was just recently is episode 83. It was in, on May 22nd. We interviewed Elizabeth Chapel, And one thing that she does, and you, she talks a little bit about her story, but she also teaches a pattern design class. And so there's information on that episode where you, if you really are interested in like taking class, you know, we could um, push you uh, towards her direction. Yeah, and I she's actually getting ready to start a class soon, and so we'll have a link in the description for oh okay for that okay, and then also there was in episode sixty nine that was on October thirty first of twenty twenty two, you guys talk about growing as fabric and pattern designers. Episode fifty three that's April eleventh of twenty twenty two. You sort of go into your whole story of um, well actually. That that one's not about your whole story, but you do you do discuss that topic. Episode thirty two is where you go into the story of how you began designing fabric, and that was from July twelfth, twenty twenty one. It was like two years ago, and then also on April nineteenth, twenty twenty one, you talk about getting started for other people. If you're interested in getting started with fabric design or pattern design, what to do, 
And then I found even all the way back in episode 10, which was in September 21st, 2020, you guys talk about the design software you use. And you've talked about that here and there as well. Um, and then the last thing I would say is that if you go through any of our episodes where we interview other fabric designers or pattern designers, I think those are informative as well because we always ask, how did you get started? What led you to it? You know, what are some some of your inspirations? And we, we try to pick their brains a little bit about how they got to where they got. So there's always going to be good information in those type of episodes as well. So I'll yeah. have those all in the show notes and popped up on the screen. Just just wanted to let you guys know in case you feel like, hey, you haven't talked about this for a little bit and you are interested, you can go right to any of those episodes and, and maybe uh, take a listen and find some of those answers. Wow, thank Billy, you, yeah, you did you. your homework. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Holy thank cow. you for looking that up. No problem. All right, so with that, are you guys ready to get into some new listener questions? I am ready. <laughs> okay. The first one here, we're gonna we'll start with the sewing and pattern questions, or they're mostly sewing questions. Like I said, we're not doing much pattern. Um, and the first part is directed towards me, and then the the rest is towards you. I can answer mine real quick. So first it says, Billy, congratulations. Did you buy everyone a round of drinks? Which I hear is a tradition. Um, I'll oh. answer that real quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is a tradition that if, if someone hits a hole in one, you go in and whoever's in the clubhouse, you buy drinks are on you. I don't know where that came from. You know, you would think, hey, people should celebrate me because I'm the one to hit the hole in one. But the, <laughs> yeah. the tradition is golf is that the person who does it Drinks are on, on you. I didn't go to, I, we didn't go in there. We were, we all had places to go right after, <laughs> but I did. We left the cart girl. We made sure that you bring it in and get you and some of the employees some drinks. And I gave the cart guy uh, 25 bucks at the end too. And there was a couple guys and I said, I hit a hole in one. You guys take care of yourselves. And, oh, and that was, that was so nice. I, I, I tried <laughs> to so nice. share a little bit, it forward. Yeah. but I didn't go in and, by all the other anyone right. else who was in there, I don't know how many people. Oh, Mason were is going to be like offended. <laughs> <laughs> so, but okay, but that's that. Now it's to that's the quilting funny. question. I do have a question about nesting seams. I don't press my seams open, but how do you handle seams that don't nest? I frequently make blocks and then move them around until I am pleased with the layout. This sometimes causes block intersections that won't nest. Thanks for your input and your podcast. Yeah, so that's a great question. Yeah. I, I always love it when the seams nest, if possible. I, sometimes it's fun to design quilts where you don't have to worry about that. I like yeah. doing that too. But it's I, satisfying. It is satisfying to have the, <laughs> that's yes, the word. That you is guys. the word to have those seams nest. Uh, sometimes I'll look at it and if I can change just one of the things that I've already pressed and make it nest, yeah. I will sometimes do, do that. that. It's worth it. Yeah. So, and if not, you know, it's going to be a little bit bulkier and you just, it is what it is. But yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, it's impossible to have every single block intersection nest. Yeah. Yeah. It sure feels good when they do. I agree. You just have that moment where you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The next one is a question about king size, making a quilt for a king size bed. So uh, dun, dun. <laughs> this listener wrote in, I have been wanting to make a quilt for my king size bed. My quilting frame is 10 feet long and I can't really quilt a large enough quilt to hang over the sides of the bed as it has an 18 inch mattress or uh, 18 foot mattress, right? Is that or 18, or 18 inch? inch, inch is yeah, the depth. Yeah. Okay. The depth. I was like, that's yeah. a yeah. huge bed. Hey, <laughs> I could use an 18 foot. <laughs> my, my husband would say the same. Yeah. He's like, please yeah. get away from my space. It take up the whole room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't mind it. Okay, so now 18 inches depth. Yes. Do you have any suggestions for placing something on the bed that hangs down beyond the quilt and cover the bed sheets or to add to the finished quilt? I hesitate to pay someone to quilt a larger top for me due, just due to the expense. I know you in this community might have some great ideas and or hacks to solve my problem. Thank you so much, or thank you in advance. So a couple of things that I've seen that I thought of after I read this question, one of them is called a bed runner. 
So it's sort of like a table runner, but for a bed. So you can make it long enough to put at the foot of the bed Mm -hmm. and hang down over. I've seen people do that. The other thing I've seen people do is buy just a plain white comforter, something like that, and then put a quilt diagonally on a king size bed so that it still shows on the bed, but yet... You know, it's not a king size quilt. It's probably a full or a queen or, yeah. you know, uh, or just a square quilt. You could use an 80 by 80. And if you had something underneath that would cover the sides of the mattress, then you could still use a diagonal set yeah. quilt as decoration. That's actually a cool decoration. idea. Yeah. Or even just fold one at the bottom. Yeah. So uh, just a couple ideas. I, I know those quilts are pricey to have quilted for king and they're also a lot of work to do so yeah it's i already feel like i'm wrestling a small cow when i have a large quilt (laughs) right like botanical that's what happened with this one i'm sitting there just like (laughs) wrestling this thing yeah i can't imagine yeah see everyone knows the story i took a king size quilt from my mom when we got married yes and i gave well, one when to we your got sister the king, too yeah she gave ones. yeah i'll change that she gave it to me guys yeah. she gave it to me i've never made a king size quilt yeah well baby and, cow and wrestling i want a baby cow i want to make a couple more because i only have one king size quilt but in it's our so fabrics pretty. It's so yeah. pretty though. That's yeah. like my favorite quilt. The um the it's in that has the purples. Yes, it's Balboa. Balboa. Yeah. So, but I want to make a fall quilt in our fabrics and I want to make a Christmas, Christmas quilt, quilt in our yeah. And now I want to make a in a red, white and blue quilt. Yeah, in our fa- so, you know, those things are kind of on my list, but they they haven't been started yet. So, she, she, yeah. you want to know that she's going to take this as a challenge. She's yeah. going to have three king size quilts made well, in like two weeks, you guys. I might try to get the Christmas king size done for this year. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that, that's a new analogy too, Chelsea. Wrestling a small cow yeah. or maybe a calf if it yeah. is. A bit. It's true. <laughs> okay. We're thinking of quilting and rodeo analogies. You want to know yeah. what? You know. Who I actually can't take credit for it. I think I heard that reference from. Lori Simpson. Oh, did from you? Minikin Simpson. Oh, really? I think she actually has that on an Instagram post. I think that's why that's in my head. Oh, oh she okay. I think talked about sewing bigger quilts okay. and said that. And I thought it was hilarious, probably. I'm gonna go try to find it. Okay. It's good yeah. you cited your source. Yeah, though, so. I, you yeah. know me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta cite my sources. <laughs> but that's interesting. I'm almost positive I'll try to go find it. Okay. Well, maybe an update on the next episode. Yeah, yeah. We'll let you guys know. Okay, so the next one, do you make a quilt from the same pattern more than once? I know you design patterns specifically for your collections. I know the answer to this one. Does it bother you as a pattern designer to see people use your patterns with other designers' fabrics? And I'm I'm confident that that doesn't bother you at all. Oh. But yeah, how, how many times do you make your patterns over and over again? Well... Mom remade one of my patterns. <laughs> I've made this now in three different sizes. Yeah, in three I made different a, sizes. A four block runner before. Yeah, just out of Seashore Drive. So mom mostly. can take credit for Hearts at Home too, because <laughs> yeah. I made the original and then she made the the four block wall hanging. Now a nine, now the other, right. the, the full size. Yeah, I I have made Hearts at Home the original Hearts at Home more than once, and I still it's the bigger block version of this. So I've made that one twice, yeah. I think. I've made my Dreamin' pattern twice because the original quilt was in Fig Tree. And then when oh, yeah. Seashore Drive came out, I really wanted to make it in that collection. And then yeah. my four square quilt, I've made multiple times because the first time it was the Swell Christmas collection. Yes. And so I remember that. And I just made it in strawberry lemonade and I included seven sizes in the pattern because I realized I I want to use this for my go-to baby quilt pattern yeah and I, I don't always want to do the math when I sit down to sew so I wanted it in a pattern yeah. so I could just read my pattern and I'm trying to think I feel like there are some others I've made more than once but it's generally the more simple quilts that I'll yeah. remake because they're good for gifting or they're not finished, but my Hello Fall quilt, I originally made 
The blocks are done, but it is not put together. Oh, Cider. you have to get that done for I this fall. I know. Cider by Basic Gray is such a good collection. Yeah. And then, because it wasn't with a pattern, re- with a fabric release. Right. And then with Bountiful Blooms, I started making it in, yeah, Hello Fall and Bountiful Blooms. Right. But they're not, but uh, yeah, I do need, I'm going to have time. Yeah. I need to Yeah, and then that. for the second part of that question, it doesn't bother me at all when people use my patterns with other Not people's fabrics. I love it. It's fun to see <laughs> another look for that design. I think creatively, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Is if you are in love with a different fabric collection for that pattern and that's what you're imagining in, it in. Right. Awesome. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, that's great. Yeah. And we have a lot of those on our Facebook group where people will make our patterns, but use, there's a, a lot of people use Cory Yoder's fabrics or Lella Boutique mm-hmm. and Fig Tree. And it's awesome to see. I love it. Yeah. And some people choose to use our fabric. A, a lot of people choose to use our fabrics, which is great too. Doesn't bother me at all. I yeah. think that's awesome. And also like, yeah, we see a lot of our fabrics, but other people's patterns. Yeah. Yes. So true. Yep. The next one, I, I feel like we have discussed this in the past as well, but it, it's, dealing with quilting retreats. So what do you take with you to quilting retreats? Do you take many projects? Do your supplies change depending on the length of the retreat, whether it's a full week or a weekend? And I I probably am guessing this does depend on maybe the length or what specifically you're doing, but are there any staples that you have to take with you on quilting retreats? Yeah, I love this question too. And we we did kind of talk about it because I remember you yeah. kind of talked about it in relationship Recently. to your trip to, to down to California yeah. this winter. So yeah, I like to have things cut and prepared to sew, packaged. Same. Yes, I have grouped into grouped. Le- yeah. Yeah, I Different love bins. Right. I love to take extra background fabric because I feel like that's the thing that you can't match when you're out of town. Yeah. And that's good advice. So take excess. Excess. And then it also depends on where you're going if there's a shop right there. If you're going to a retreat center and there is a place to buy supplies, you know, you don't have to be as thorough. But I do have a blog post too with a that talks about this and there's a PDF that you can print that has a list of things that you might want to think about and take with you. So we can also link to that in the description. I could honestly use a quilt retreat. I really, really could. I actually typed up a list and of all the quilts I haven't made that like Uh there, I have a lot that need to be made. And mom is always like before a fabric release, she's like, Hey, what do you think about like getting a hotel and like sewing? And <laughs> we could just see, cause she's always like, Chelsea's got to get her quilts done. I know. When is she going to get them done? And I'm always like, Oh mom, I'm fine. Like I'll get them done and probably stress her out too much, but I kind of could use one. All right. So next question oh, is, wait. yeah. I just thought of something. Oh, go right ahead. <laughs> so yesterday oh, I met with my Patreon group and we were talking about shortcuts and tips for sewing. And one of our members shared this amazing gadget, which I, as soon as the meeting was over, I went and got my phone and ordered. <laughs> but it's called the Clover. Uh, it's made by Clover. It's called the Quilt Dome. Dome. And what it is, is this little gadget and you can thread up to 10 needles and then you insert it into this thing. And so it will store 10 threaded needles. What? And then you can remove the needle and thread. And so like for when I bind, I was stopping and threading the needle. Yes. So if I had that filled with 10 threaded needles before I started, I wouldn't have to stop and... So anyway, I got online and ordered myself one last night. We'll put a link to that in the description. When you too. bind the rest of my quilts, I hope you are like using this. Oh, I hope it comes fast. Yeah, so, that's yeah. great. Yeah, mom's like, I'm such a quick binder. I'll be done with yours. But it's going to be a game changer for working on my paper piece hexagons. And yes. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And also for retreats. That's what made me think of it because... It encloses, you know, you can always thread 10 needles and put them in a pin cushion, but this little gadget keeps them enclosed so that you could throw it in a bag and take it on a trip. So anyway. Can I pause for just a second and say something? Did you switch out the Moda Love quilt? I did. 
Okay, sorry. You guys can't see this, but mom made the Moda Love and, and strawberry lemonade. And this whole time I've been kind of like staring at it. I'm like, that's not the other they, fabric. They can see it on my camera. Oh, they can? Yeah. I think it sometimes just a little shows. Bit. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I just noticed that. Yeah. No, that that quilt at the end of the room is the quilt that was on the cover of the Moda catalog. There were so many questions about it on my Instagram yes. recently, which is why. And people were like, that's the Moda Love. That's the Moda Love. And I'm like, it's the Moda Love. And it's free. We'll put a link for yeah, that Yeah, it's too. free. Yeah. Moda did it. It's awesome. Link in the description. I just like the, the lights are right here and they're like blinding me and I... Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Sorry. That was... No. Cool. It looks good up there. Yeah. But back to that the <laughs> clover quilt dome thing. She did. She actually demonstrated it right there on the Zoom meeting. I yeah. Thought that was cool. So oh, you could cool. see it. Yeah. yeah. It was she so just great. Put it in front of her camera. And That's awesome. Showed everyone how yep. to do it. And it's not that pricey either. I feel like with shipping and everything, it was around $15. So... I'm super excited. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So I see what you're saying. Cause that would be, you can't, you're going to bring that on your next retreat for sure. Right. Yeah. I see. Okay. So the next question question says, I hear the word linen and I think of a type of fabric. Sometimes I think the word linen is used as a color too. So my question is, is linen a fabric type or color or both? Also is, is linen fabric okay to put in with other quilting fabric? Yeah, I love this question. I, I refer to linen in both ways as a mm-hmm. color, you know, a, a, to- a light tan. Yeah. And, and it is definitely a fabric type. And I love quilts with linen mixed with quilting cotton. And yeah. Moda sells some linen type cotton yeah. fabrics. And we've used them kind of more with our earlier collections, I feel, that had a more ivory tone i remember Reminds doing me of like the cross weave like yes. kind of like but it's not the it's not the right. same it's just but yeah i i did a lot of projects when i'm thinking desert bloom and oh yeah yeah I, yeah, where yeah i mixed linen you with mixed linens with it fabrics. i do remember that i did some pillows and this is really funny because my daughter's reading nancy drew with my grandma <laughs> and linen came up yes i was in my sewing room oh. and ashton's like linen <laughs> My grandma's like excitedly explaining it to her. So I was excited that he brought this question up. Yeah. Well, what what is the difference? Is it thinner than it's, cotton? It's a woven yeah. fabric. Woven. So it, there, you know, sometimes you can see through a really light when okay. linen, sometimes it's more tightly woven. Yeah. But you can see the fibers in going both directions and... I'm sure there's an even more technical explanation yeah, okay. than that, but yeah, it's. I thought that that just visually described it perfect because that's what it. You can see those right. on it. It's not yeah. like you're looking at Bella 200. Yeah, that's different, you know. And there are all, all different, you know, qualities and types, but it it does shrink a little bit more, and I feel like. I have put it in a quilt before, and I don't think that quilt has ever been washed. So oh. it's actually Ew, my, my mom. Or, well, no, it's been at a <laughs> shop. Junk. It's been at the Christmas Goose since almost I made it. That my it was my original vintage quilt, and I used linen background, yeah. and I think a collection by Three Sisters for the blocks. Yeah, but she has had that on display for quite a while. Yeah, so. All right. Uh, the next one, I'm in the market for a chair for a mach- for machine sewing. I've been using an extra dining table chair and lately is giving me back aches. That's what I use. Um, so she's asking for, do you, do you have any recommendations? Also, do you think it's better to have arms on a chair or not? Um, and she said, thank you, Chelsea. Thank you and Chelsea for these beautiful fabrics and for sharing all your knowledge. I look forward Aww. to every podcast. Uh, that's from Thank Megan. Thank you. Thank you. So chair recommendations. Do you <laughs> wish it had arms? Oh. I don't want, okay, here's my thing against arms. I got to be able to roll out of my right. sewing chair <laughs> very quickly to get things done. What and chair do you use? It is an old dining room chair. Sure. I want one like mom's. It's all padded <laughs> and nice and has wheels on on it but i don't want i don't i think arms would make me feel very restricted like yeah. even these kind of like freak me out but i i'm not sewing so these right. are perfect because there's low yeah on these chairs so what do you think yeah i i do love that chair for years post the link sewed, post the link oh i sewed with this old chair it actually was the 
chairs that went with this table that we oh, got from yeah. your dad's grandmother's house. I have a picture house. of you in it. Yeah. And it squeaked every yeah. time I moved in that chair. And I literally sewed with that chair for 10 years. Years. And it would squeak when you moved. And I didn't want to get rid of it because it was so cool. It was like from the 1950s. But I, when Val built her new house... And I went over one of the first times and she was showing me her sewing room. She had this great chair. And I said, oh, I have to get that chair. And it was from Wayfair. And I just got on and it came in 20 different colors and shipped to my house. And I have loved it. And there are, if you get on Wayfair, there are so many, you know, chairs like that, mm-hmm. padded wheels and so many different things i've i've just really loved my chair isn't, so. yeah. isn't your chair though because when we did your sewing room tour like it was sold out that it was out of i think the, yeah. yeah the exact one i'm not able to link it for yeah. anyone because it was sold out but I, I is it that. adjustable it is adjustable that's what i need yeah because i have to sit on like two pillows yeah it's yeah so probably you're looking for something adjustable probably also on a swivel yes. would be nice because like yeah, yeah like that uh, that way you can move a little yeah. back and forth. Wheels would help, but... Wheels would help. Yeah, these That's chairs, cool. I think we got off of Amazon, right? Actually, yeah. I do Those like this chair. Those came from Amazon. Chair. Yeah. Somewhere. And they're pretty comfortable. Yeah, actually, maybe yeah. I'll just buy this chair. Yeah. <laughs> we could probably find where, where these ones came from, but... Yeah. Wayfair does have the chair of moms, though, because... I, I know they do. There's some that look so similar. Yeah. I feel like it's really the same chair, just, you know... Yeah. But, but no shame in using a dining, a dining room chair. Room I mean, chair. Chelsea's still doing it and sounds I'm like you did it for years it. and years. I did years, it for but, years. Yeah. But if it is something that's actually affecting, you know, your back and everything, right. then you want to find something that benefits that. Yeah. And speaking of this question mixed with the question before it, a lot of people to retreats bring a chair pad because sometimes at a retreat, you don't know what, oh, type, what of type of chair, chair you're going to have. And so that is mm. something that I've seen a lot of women bring on their retreats is a pad to sit on. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Okay. This one is recently, I remember you mentioning trying out bamboo batting. And I was wondering if you have had a chance to try it out and what your thoughts are on it. Thank you for, thank you and your family for all that you do. And that's from Carol. So... I believe I'm pretty sure Marion used bamboo here, and I think you and said I think, Val, and I know Val used bamboo there on the row quilt. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, I think I prefer it with a more dense quilting. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it is a little bit puffier than the warm and white, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, it has been good. I did do kind of the fold test and I felt like there were still some wrinkles some so but yeah I'm I'm it's it's great I'll I'll see more because I need to finish I well I need to do the binding on that one for you so I'll have to like kind of see how I like that when I'm sitting with it I I gotta be honest though the puffiness reminds me of my great-grandma Right. And all of her, her stuff was very puffy. But I, it just kind of brings back that memory. Yeah. So it has a different feel. It yeah. does have a little different bit. Different texture. Texture, oh, yeah. I miss that house. I could <laughs> literally walk blind oh, through grandma's house, through grandma's house yeah. and find exactly everything. Oh, yeah. I, Billy, Billy knows. It's <laughs> good memories there. The ne- next one, I'll, I'll do this one first because... This is the one that was added on. A listener wrote in, I'm in desperate need of help with my strong desire to sew more and finish more projects in a timely manner. I really don't want to take an entire year to complete two or three projects. Whatever assistance you can offer me would be greatly appreciated if you um, could respond. So, yeah. yeah. So someone, I, I know this is, you probably have some good advice on this, Mom. I do. This is from Julie Kay and... Hi, Julie, if you're listening. This is a great question. And actually, we are going to have a special guest. I'm not sure when that episode is going to air. But I have 
developed a, a fun little relationship with a, she's actually a pediatric endocrinologist who loves planning. And she's actually going to be a guest on our Quilting Life podcast sometime late August, early September. Do I know who it is? No, no. So, but we're going to tape the episode August 15th, I and then it. I'm not sure when it'll air. But she's going to have some great ideas for everyone I know because she is just it. so good at organizing. And that's exactly why I want to have her on the podcast is to talk about organizing as it relates to quilters. So that will be coming, but just a couple of quick things. I think you need to start at the top and say, how many projects do I want to finish in a year? You know, because you say you want to do more than two or three. What's the goal? Right. What's the goal? Is, is six what you want to do? And then, okay, well, that's two months a piece. Mm -hmm. And then break, just keep breaking it down. How much time do you need to sew a week yeah. to get a project done in two months or do you want to make one project a month that that's what I would do to break it down yeah so that when we get new fabric and you know I have five quilts to make in five weeks then I just know I have to get one done a week right <laughs> so mom's like five quilts in five days <laughs> but, but no I feel like that's a really good way to uh just kind of break it and Sarah, who's going to be the guest, she she kind of helped me look at things that way, like starting at the top and then breaking it down. You have any thoughts? Sarah? I do, actually, because yeah. I feel like I am so different when trying to get things done. What helps me is I really only – I like to block out time in my day now, and I know I'm sewing from this hour right. to this hour. And if that's the goal, then I'm always getting, like some people are like 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. That's great. And then you're done. And then you say, okay, I've clocked out. I'm done. But I think also, I just I just think a top three has helped me. And if yes. sewing, guys, it's really, really important because my brain gets super overwhelmed because I like lists. And then I think everything on the list has to be done in one day. Right. And that's not true. And so I pick three every single day. So I think if you're sewing... I'm going to sew one hour today, but that's on your top three every day. Yeah. Then, you know, I finished one of my top three. Maybe the other is mowing the lawn. Maybe the other is, you know, I don't know. So Grocery shopping. Yeah, or, grocery shopping. It could be. I need to do. Because. It helps you because guess what? It is, I think, proven take the short, the, the smaller wins because they add up to the bigger wins. Right. And it kind of gives you a little... My grandma told me this. My my middle child kind of has struggled with reading. And we were going to start out. I was like, let's start out with a bigger book. And my grandma was like, let's start out with a small win because it's going to be huge for her. And it was. And she finished that first book really quickly. And then guess what? She went into a book that had way more chapters that was a little bit more difficult. And she's loving it. And she's finishing the last chapter today. Yeah. And she loves it. And I have not had, I could cry, my child love reading. I would have never thought that. The whole year, it was just horrible. And her reading with my grandma has been huge. And then we're going to go back to a smaller book right after this and oh, do good. a short big win. Right. So I would say take those little wins that actually are a huge deal yeah. to you. Okay. Sorry. No. Done I with had, my little pep talk yeah, here. No, it's been so fun to watch that whole <sighs> thing happening with the grandchildren. Oh my gosh. And my, my kids mom. are loving it. Yeah. My grandma loves it. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. So I did want to add one thing that I try to do. I always try to leave something ready to sew. Oh, you talk about this or, all the time. Or ready to trim or yes. ready to press. And I actually used it today. So last night I had some little star blocks that I'm making for a magazine quilt. And I had them right by my sewing machine. In fact, Billy had seen them. What are these? You know, and I said, oh, they're... <laughs> and, but what anyway, you got here like a little bit later than we kind of we, well we didn't really know when you were going to get here yeah guys so it was bad <laughs> yeah so i had some extra time i went in i chain pieced all those stars now they're ready to iron you know and so <laughs> now i've earned a snickers bar so yes <laughs> but yes. had you not left them out <gasps> right maybe you wouldn't yeah maybe you wouldn't have done it right yourself about yeah. it but it was super easy just to sit down 
turn on the machine and chain piece those eight stars. You know? Oh my goodness. So yeah. chain piece those 4,000 stars. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I love, I love this. I love this. But no, you're right though. You have something set out and then you're right. like, oh, I could do this right now. Right. Yeah. Love it. All right. I want to make sure we get to this question. This might be the last one. Okay. But uh, I think we can get two more in. Uh, but this one is a follow up with the gift giving question podcast that we did oh yeah so it's sort of a follow-up question so she said question about gifting a quilt to someone and during a hard time i find this usually is unexpected so do you gift them a quilt that is already totally finished do you finish a quilt top that's already made do you whip up an entire quilt as quickly as possible she said i really enjoy gifting and i think it does mean a lot to someone going through a hard time just curious how you approach it i think there's two different ways Mom has had an experience she shared on the last podcast about the little girl. Mm -hmm. It just was like happenstance. Mom had the perfect quilt to give her. Right. And it was perfect. But I think sometimes there's someone I know and love that I plan on gifting them a quilt this year or hopefully soon. And I think for her, it's going to be more specific. Mm -hmm. And it just depends. Yeah. I think it's helpful to kind of just have a little stash of quilts That's true. that are ready to gift. And because I feel like the times when I've just had the thought, I need to give that person a quilt. And when don't I, wait. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't wait. And I've when I've been able to go and just pull a quilt out of the closet and give that to them, it's just worked out so well. In fact, <laughs> I need to go through my quilt closet. Chelsea and I were talking. Oh. When the kids are back in school, we're going to take – all the quilts out of the closets and we're going to we're going to arrange them by fabric collection and then scrap quilts separately and then we're going to have to like pare it down a little bit so <laughs> all right then uh, <laughs> okay i think we can get this last one in here okay so it's it's towards it's for mom question for sherry was it always your plan to have your children involved in a quilting life or or was it just a happy accident? And I know we have actually talked about this in the past too. I love but this I mean, question. But let's let's specify it to when you did start get things going. Did you think, hey, I can get more of my family involved, or were you not really thinking about about that originally? Yeah. No. I mean, originally, I didn't even ever intend for this to be a business. You know, honestly, yeah. it, it was really people coming to me. And saying, hey, you should do this, or, you know, you should, you should do this, you should. So I'm really grateful for those people who reached out because I just don't know if my brain would have gone that direction. And, you know, I do remember specifically with Chelsea, you know, we've told that story driving home thinking I've got to ask my daughter if she wants to do this because I knew she had that, that artistic gene in her. And, but I feel like it just kind of, you know, walking down a path and doors open and, and we took them. So, and honestly, Billy, you know, you're the one that reached out to us about this podcast yeah. and had that idea. And also you're the one whose idea it was initially to film a few videos for YouTube. So, yeah, I feel like along this whole journey, it's actually been people coming to me and then finally, I don't know when it was, maybe maybe not till 2016 or 2017, then when I would just really started being intentional and started thinking, yeah. I have to figure this out, you know. And could you have ever imagined what how what happened yeah, with it? Never what blossomed because never of it? could have imagined. Yeah. The new Moda Peace catalog in our spread it talks about like my reluctance to even sew or quilt and so i will tell you 100 percent honest i had no intentions and actually when mom came to me about this whole fabric designing thing i was terrified because i am the child i was the child that i I don't want to make big decisions and i don't want to answer emails and answer (laughs) phone calls and i'm still a little bit that way and it scared me so bad but i literally have had moments where i'm like I cannot imagine not doing this right now. Right. And it is like breathing now and it is awesome. And obviously you still have tri- trials and challenges along the way, but right. 
it's, I think that was it is the doors were there and we, we took them right. and we went for it. And sometimes those things are scary, but I, I think it's so cool to work with my family and I, my kids have kind of seen this and it's kind of gotten the little entrepreneur in them as well. Yeah. I think it scared my husband a little because he grew up with a family business. Yeah, his grandmother yeah. and his father were in business together and his It's a lot. Yeah. And his brother worked there for a time and he did and actually both of his sisters worked there for a while too. And so he saw that dynamic and business side. And yeah. And so I think he was a little hesitant. Hesitant for us to all do this, but I think now yeah. he's really happy. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we close it off? I'll read a few podcast, Apple podcast reviews. Ooh, we haven't had those in a while. Yeah, I think the last episode, listener question episode, I, I forgot about it. Yeah. So they, I, I won't get through everything that we have, but I'm going to read three today. And one of them actually brings up this first one I'm going to read. Uh, it says, listen every week. Thanks, guys, for starting this podcast. I'm a regular listener and love the positivity tips and when I'm watching and not and, and when I'm watching, not just listening, all of the quilt eye candy. The production is so great. And of course I enjoy the stories and tips. And then this part had me interested. I need to go back and look. Waiting for a follow-up to episode 59. Maybe a work in progress challenge. Hugs and thanks. And that's from Reba Quilts. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to go back. This was left a couple months ago. So I need to go back and see maybe what she's referring yeah. to in episode 59 maybe we He's do need to you. follow yeah, up yeah. maybe <laughs> i feel like you know i've done those a couple times maybe we should do one for our yeah, podcast we should do listeners it. Yeah. yeah yeah i like that yeah this is good okay so thank you for leaving that uh the next one i'm gonna read here should be from elena uh, an incredible podcast i love this podcast i don't miss an episode great information very relatable, honest, and realistic. I appreciate their kind voices, the gentle take on quilting, and reassuring us that this is a fun, relaxing hobby. Don't stop making the podcast. It highlights my commute. Elena. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, those are both so nice. And really, we would love for anyone who is willing to go leave us a review. It really does help other people find our podcast. Yeah. So Apple has some type of algorithm where it depends on how many reviews there are as to what podcasts they are sharing to other people that might be listening to other creative podcasts. Yeah. So, yeah, we love those reviews. I'm going to read one more since we are a little backed up on them. So uh, this, this uh, the title of this one, Great Podcast. This is the only podcast that I listen to every episode. I look forward to each one. So many good tips, topics, and quilts. And I love the dy dynamic between Sherry, Chelsea, and Billy. Family is so important. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I agree. Family is so important. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I, I we get so many comments about that. And I, I'm so grateful. I mean, we are not a perfect family by any means. No. And, you know, <laughs> we, we have our moments. But what I have always loved about all of my children and, and our in, in immediate family is that I feel like we're, we're just like really willing all of us to like just let things go and just move forward. And yeah. so, you know, whenever and whenever there has been anything with any of the members of our family, I feel like, you we know, are like that. it does get, you know, Resolved. Resolved. Yeah, we yeah. always do. Yeah. So that's, that's that's a real blessing. Yeah. We're an eccentric bunch, but yeah. <laughs> boy, do we got it together a and, little bit. And we're very different. We're all very we're different. We're all so different. Our yeah. personalities, too. Yeah. I mean, you guys, Thanksgiving is wild. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so thank it. you for those reviews. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And there are some more that, like I said, I, because we'll I, I forgot okay. last time. So keep, uh, keep leaving them and we'll... Maybe we'll get some more in some other episodes as well. Okay. And we will be back in two weeks yes. with our next episode on August 14th. Yes. And your children will be in school. My kids are going to be in school. <laughs> when we tape the episode, When too. we tape it, yes. too. Guys, this is like exciting yes. time. No, my kids are great. <laughs> and we felt like this summer went by really, really fast. Like So fast. My daughter, my middle child already has soccer signups. And I got to go oh. run and get her signed up because... 
she loves soccer. Yeah. It, it just feels like it's all really quick. They got their school teachers. It's crazy. Wow. They're already going to be back in school. Yes. And I'm going to get so much done. Uh (laughs) No more I'm bored and I'm hungry. Okay. Right. Right. It's that snacking all day long. It's snacking. It's killing me. I'm like, there is no way you're starving right now. Right. Parent problems, people. No, we are so grateful. We love all of the questions that you've sent in and keep sending them in so that we have them for next time. This was a great podcast episode and hopefully we answered all of the questions that you had and gave some answers that are satisfying for you. And we will see you again in August. Yes. (laughs) Thanks so much for stopping by. 